says traffic is gridlocked leaving the city and it's slow in the other direction with liquefaction around the river. People should be careful that heavy furniture in offices and houses may have shifted and may present a hazard. Roger Sutton says large areas of the city do not have power. He says it's impossible to get around and look at the damage and that means the company can't tell if it's safe to restore power. People with major injuries or who are trapped need to dial 111 and persevere because the phone lines are congested. Christchurch Airport has been closed because of suspected damage. People in earthquake-stricken areas to head towards home or to a pre-arranged emergency meeting place. With two feet firmly on the ground, it's easy to feel safe. The earth has a number of layers, which provide us with secure, solid ground. It's vital that people know what to do immediately after an earthquake, which is the most critical time for reducing injuries and fatalities. Make sure you have water, make sure you have torches, make sure you have battery powered radios and things that you actually um, do need because you'll find it could happen any time. It could be any sort of disaster and, and you do need to make yourself prepared, um, both from mentally if it, if it occurs, but also physically so that your survival and, and the people around you and your family um, is, is first and paramount. Seismologists are also using the Christchurch earthquakes to gather important information. So one of the other things that's really important is to try and understand how seismic energy attenuates in the crust. So if you have an earthquake source here, how, how does this area over here shake in an earthquake? And so we have these seismometers deployed throughout the Canterbury Plains that are capturing all these earthquakes in really good detail. And that's really important for redesigning buildings and for understanding where areas where we should and shouldn't live, for instance. This knowledge is being applied on a daily basis but the recovery phase is always long and it can test people's patience. Despite the devastation, there is a degree of optimism and a strength of community spirit. Through every earthquake and every aftershock, you know that you're not the only person who's experiencing that. You know, everybody around you, if you're in the supermarket and everything starts to shake, there's other people, you're not alone, you've shared this experience. And one of the great things about the people of Christchurch is that we all feel ownership of this city now um, because we've all been through this whole experience of, you know, we've had over 10,000 earthquakes or aftershocks here in the city since September 2010. Um, so we feel a real ownership of the city and, and a real drive to actually make this a city that we want to be here. The time the rebuild is complete, we'll have a very a resilient building within the CBD and it should be a very safe place. I think on a whole, Everybody wants to see Christchurch become the amazing city that it was. We are probably the most prepared and educated people in the world at the moment as far as earthquakes go. What well, we've all council staff and everybody that's just kind of hanging around the streets to see at home.